Hello everyone, my name is Kinetic and welcome back to Soul Sacrifice Delta. So I've been trying to like work my way into unlocking uh, some of the newer bosses and finally I found some more interesting ones at, uh, at some of the higher tier uh, forgotten packs and so that's what I'm going to show you guys. And what I'm going to do also here is show you a couple of new things. For one, I am going to show you the, the four diamond blood magic that I have. This new blood magic, this one and uh, there's another one here. Uh, I think this one I got from... No, I got this one. This was the one I got from the Naked King, I think. Or maybe it was this one. I don't know. One of these two I got from the Naked King. But anyway, this is really, really powerful stuff. Either one of these is really, really good. The only difference between these two, it seems, is uh, is the length at which you can just hold and uh, continuously attack. So I'm going to show you how awesome that is because uh, it's pretty damn awesome. And I'm also going to show you a new spell combination using the blanket and the ground mine and also the ground mine and the air mines. So you guys will be able to see uh, a couple of new combinations, which are pretty sweet. One of which is, oh, it's so amazing. So enough talk, let's get started. I'm going to bring two of my buddies from the Grim Pack. Let's get started. What's great about this fight too is it also takes place on one of the newest stages in Soul Sacrifice Delta. So I was really happy when I tried this fight out just a moment ago and I was like, yes, it's at this place because this is a really cool stage. I really like this one. And that's one of my new followers that I have, my allies. But yeah, first check this place out, man. This place is so freaking awesome. I love this location. This is easily one of the coolest arenas in all of Soul Sacrifice. You may have noticed also that I've got a new costume on. I got this from Famitsu Magazine actually. When I bought one of the newest issues of Famitsu, it had a code for a free costume and so I've got this really sweet fox costume. Look at that tail. Yeah, that tail is awesome. <laughs> But yeah, man, like, look at that door, for example. Doesn't that door look absolutely amazing? Like, the color and texture and detail? This is really, really good stuff, man. I love Delta so much. Alright, Basilisk. Let's do this again. I'm gonna skip that the way I always do. I'm gonna lay down a blanket. And I'm a little slow. But there we go. Blanket's down. Here comes the seed. The ground mine. And look what happens! It turns into a freaking fire turret. Based on whatever element that you use, the combination will be whatever that element is. In this case, I've got a basically like a Venus flytrap type of uh, ground turret. It's awesome. It didn't really do me that... Oh, here's a good opportunity maybe to use it. When your enemy is knocked down like that, or immobilized maybe in like one place. Careful, sometimes the seed will detonate. <laughs> it's a great time to have a turret active when they're in one place because the, the, the turret will just be gunning on that boss. There we go, here he goes. Look at him, he's gonna light him up now. I'm gonna put down another seed and this time I'm gonna use the air mines in combination with the ground mines. Or it's gonna get detonated. <laughs> Never mind. Let's show them off the blood magic then. This is badass right there. Really liking this blood magic spell. It's really, really awesome. Alright, where the hell are you? There you are. Oh, watch out for that. These air mines are great against this boss, I've noticed, because that's why. They, they they seem to counter him while he's flying and knock him down, so that way you can go in for some pretty awesome combos. Alright, so now, ground mine, air mine, and we've got a supercharged ground mine now that shoots up 
fireballs into the air like mortars that rain down on everything below. It is absolutely awesome. It's not quite as cool to me as the, um, as the turret version from earlier, but I think that that one's really, really cool too. If you've got a bunch of enemies in the area, then I think that this is a really cool combination. I'm going to do it again just so you guys can see it. Or not. <laughs> he keeps detonating the damn seeds. All right, whatever. I'm just going to tear him apart with some blood magic. Oh, I broke his curse part. He's, I think he's got five cursed parts. And I got bound by the damn spiders. I think we, oh, somebody. Oh, right. He was, uh, he was in Infernal Hell. One of my allies detonated that. That's cool. All right. Let's try this again. Seed. Air mines. Do it. So automatically the air mines get sucked in by the ground mine. And you can see now. Look at it. It's like the 4th of July, baby. It's awesome. And, and the ground mine will detonate if, uh, if an enemy comes close to it. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this already or not, but what, depending on whatever faction you are a part of will depend on how your your spells are refreshed. So like with before, right, you would normally in Soul Sacrifice, sacrifice in order to refresh your spells, right? I'm taking serious poison damage from this guy. You would normally sacrifice to refresh your spells, right? Well, that only counts now if you are in the Avalon Pact, which is the Sacrifice Pact, right? If you are a part of Sanctuary, then saving, right, rather than sacrificing, is what will replenish your supplies. And for Grim, because they are neither for saving or for sacrificing, simply doing the, uh, the, the Grim version by holding L1 and R1 will refresh your spells. If you sacrifice or save while as Grim, you will not get uh, refreshed, your spells refreshed. So you have to perform it in the way that is connected with your faction, it seems. So here, if I want my spells refreshed, I have to do the Grim version. There we go. Here's the platforms, if you haven't seen these yet, these are pretty sweet. Climb up on top of these, and now you've got an extra high vantage point. This is great for a lot of flying bosses. I found this particularly effective against Griffin, who, by the way, if you didn't like Griffin in Soul Sacrifice 1, if you found him to be a pain in the ass, you're going to absolutely hate him even more in Soul Sacrifice Delta. I'm just saying. <laughs> He is even more frustrating with his flying and his diving. He's got this new insane, like, d spinning dive attack that he does. It's, it's, it's just crazy what Griffin does now. Broke another curse part. My turret's dumping on him right now. This is great. And I'm tearing his ass up with that blood magic. Oh, but that... That is really worth paying attention to and trying to dodge. Oh, we broke all his curse parts. Nice. Because it will instantly poison you. For this, though, I mean, I did bring blood magic. I could care less. As long as I'm not dead <laughs> or dying, I should say, um, then I don't care how much damage I take for the most part. I'm, I'm soaking up damage and I'm... Uh, am sacrificing my own health basically to do ridiculous amounts of damage against bosses and uh, and minions alike. But I do have to be careful. I absolutely love this combination though. That is that is so freaking awesome. I got caught in the corner. And he's done. That's it, man. That is it. <laughs> you might have noticed that he has a, a combination of a couple of existing 
bosses from the original Soul Sacrifice. He seems to have an interesting combination of like wyvern abilities and uh, and Valkyrie with the flying around and the combo attacks and stuff like that. It's a really cool boss. Basilisk is is fun. Hmm. Well, I did already save you. What should I do? Should I sacrifice him? That means I'll lose him as an ally. Let's leave it up to fate. I'll choose Grim. And Grim will decide if he lives or he dies. He is dead. <laughs> and that's Grim for you. It's all random. You may... You may get uh, an ally by saving, or you may end up sacrificing them. The same goes true for your results as well, I found out. With, um, with the original Soul Sacrifice, a lot of it was your performance, right? At this point, in, after the battle, how you did in the battle, uh, you know, how good you were you, how much health did you lose, how fast was the quest, and things like that. With the Grim, it's just, it's again, it's it's quite random. You're either lucky and you get like an extra bonus, or you're unlucky and you just get something normal. So it kind of takes away, it's a little bit, how can I say, it's a little bit on the safer side, I would say, as far as like how your, your end results will be. Like if you go, for example, Avalon Pact and, and you are sacrificing, uh, then you know how it is, like, you lose health, you lose points, and so then you have to make that up by things like counters, breaking curse parts, and stuff like that. And if you don't do that, you could have a pretty crappy score. Um, but if you do gain a lot of extra points, then you, you, of course, you guarantee yourself a great score and extra loot and stuff like that. With Grim, it seems to be a little bit more, a little bit more, how can I say, a little bit more casual, to be, for a lack of a better term, but I don't really mean that in, in a negative way. It just means that, like, you can perform and you will get basically, like, a standard reward if you're lucky, and so it, then it, it isn't really so much dependent on your performance anymore. If you're lucky, then you will get a bonus. So it, it so in that sense, like, I don't know, it's up to you guys, really. Like, if you, if you are good at pulling out the points, getting counters, breaking curse parts, you know, and all that stuff, you know how to rack up a legendary score, then maybe Grim isn't so good for you because then you may work really hard, but maybe you may not get the reward. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not very good at getting high scores, then Grim may be a better, uh, a better faction to be a part of. Right now, I'm just trying it out. You can actually see probably some color differences and some differences in what I'm doing and that's because right now I am participating as uh, as the Grim faction. Just mixing it up for fun. Alright, so let's see what my results look like. Pretty awesome and I got something new. Ooh, it looks like I got a ground mine. Very, very cool. Same thing with your essences, as you can see, they start off green and then they turn into a random combination of either life or magic essences. Anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to see more Soul Sacrifice Delta videos, definitely leave me a comment and click the like button to support these videos. I'll try to get more out to you as soon as I can to show you some more awesome boss fights. And also, don't forget that each Sunday, starting from 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time in North America, we are doing the Soul Sacrifice Resurrection Multiplayer event. So just get on at that time in Soul Sacrifice and play some multiplayer with a bunch of other people who are also looking for multiplayer fun at that time. Some people will ask me also, am I going to do this for Soul Sacrifice Delta? And my answer is yes, but I will only do that if it gets released in North America. So... Until then, we'll just be doing normal Soul Sacrifice 
multiplayer, and I would love to continue to do this until and beyond whenever Soul Sacrifice Delta does get released uh, in the Western world. Still no word on that, unfortunately, if you are wondering if I have any more um, hints or rumors as to whether it's going to be localized or when it's going to be localized, I still have absolutely no idea. Um, yeah, but if I know anything, I will definitely let you guys know via my social networks. So stay connected with me via Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. That's it for now, guys. Stay subscribed. More Soul Sacrifice Delta is coming soon. My name is Kinetic. Thanks for watching. See you next time.